Greetings and welcome back one and all to Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together, where you join me in the Farapa Wildwood. As you can tell, I have been here, done a little bit of off-screen grinding, not too much as I reached the goal that I had when I came here fairly quickly. But I did learn one thing, and that is when you leave the Farapa Wildwood and then return, it resets your progress. You do have to fight your way through uh, the earlier stages again. However, as you can probably guess when I mentioned I've reached my goal, I've got a griffin. That was pretty much the only reason I came back here. I wanted to grind until I had a griffin. I believe I may have spent a couple of skill points on my characters, specifically the beast tamer, in order to be able to get the griffin, but uh, I'm very, very happy now that we have one. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that there can be any equipment. There's like no griffin armor or anything like that that I'm aware of, and I don't believe there's any magic here. I could, certainly couldn't see any that they could equip. However, they do have a couple of interesting skills, and uh, more besides as well. Currently we know Numbing Hook, which is uh, an ability much like Mighty Blow and that sort of thing, where you do damage to a single target, but have a chance of stunning. Stunning uh, Stun Breath would do dark damage to multiple targets, and have a chance to stun, so that would be worth me dropping in Augment Darkness for as well. And then there are the other sort of odds and sods that you can uh, use on most characters. It might be worth us getting Anatomy, for example, since we are likely to be fighting against humans quite a lot of the time. But, with all of that said and done, uh, we are going to head off and we're going to be doing more story missions in this episode. But the primary... Uh, well, the last thing that I really wanted to cover in terms of my party setup is Denim. Now, I believe I mentioned in the previous episode that I am sort of itching to change Denim's class. I'm not sure what to yet. The two that I was, I've was, i kind of been swaying back and forth between have been Knight and Room Fencer, primarily because of their ability to use magic. I think it would be very good to have Denim with the ability to use magic. With Knight, he'd be very tanky. Pardon me, bit of a hiccup there. He'd be very tanky, but would lose some of his... Um, direct uh, melee damage, but would then gain light spells. On the flip side, we could go with Rune Fencer, who still has a reasonable amount of combat potential, but would also have a wider spread of magic, especially combat magic. However, since acquiring the Ninja and the Rogue, I have seriously been considering these two. And whilst my nature would probably lean more towards Rogue, I like playing Rogues in most games. Ninjas have Ninjutsu, which also ticks the magic box. So I'm leaning fairly heavily at the moment towards Ninja. Regardless, it would put us in at level 1, and that's not something I want to do before going to a story mission. So uh, let's head off to the Fidoch Castle. Oh! Looks like we're going to be having a random fight. Uh, very well. Uh, let's see. Ma current and maximum. Now, this is just going to be flat out a regular fight. We'll bring our griffin along. Um, Theda, I would like you to be here simply because I want you to continue training up. However, Wyatt, I'm going to swap you out for Sarah. Now, the reason why I want uh, Theda here is because I want to be able to get Empower Beast, and that's a little ways away at the moment. But this looks like a decent group for us to use, so let's just jump into this battle. Interesting that we've now got seven people per battle. It's usually six. Okay, who are we against? Vanquish the enemy. We have... Actually, not too many, but the looks of it. Let's have a quick glance around. We've got a priest, a berserker, another priest, a wizard. Ooh. And what are you exactly? Because these could be different classes. We've got an Edmund. Uh, looks like a cleric, actually. Really? Oh, yes. Okay. So, cleric, wizard, cleric, warrior, archer. Okay, you're one to watch out for. And berserker. Very well. Right, I would like you to start making a move for the mages and the and the clerics on this side. Canopus, let's see, can we hit the archer? I think you were the archer, weren't you? That's a bit of a shame. Okay, let's see, can't hit you. 
I could help out our griffin by doing crazy amounts of damage to you. Let's not. Let's go for you instead. We'll only do 90, but it'll, uh... It won't seem... Uh, for some reason, I just got this aversion to only leaving something with a few hit points. I would rather do less damage to something else and then kind of feel like I'm not going to waste my second attack against that thing than do a tiny bit of... Uh, well, do a load of damage and then leave something with very little hit points but then feel like I'm going to waste the next time I have to attack it. Um... We could probably get over there to that cleric, actually. Or, possibly, if we can get this blow to land... Drath, just shy. What about you? No, still no. Okay, well, we'll hit you then. That'll probably give our griffin a, a, something chunky that it can uh, bite into. Rather than feel that we're wasting our turn. Ha 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 And counter-attack. Fantastic, I approve. Right, Beast Tamer. Uh, let's continue to charge down the Cleric there. There we go. My Knight can meet the Berserker head-on, I think. And the Griffin will attack from the side. Only 20 points, but it's still a fairly low level Griffin, so this will be a battle in which it can start to gain some levels. Start to be a little bit more useful. Oh, you scoundrel. Double scoundrel. You're undoing all my hard work. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You and your crazy healing magics. Uh, ooh, actually, you're still within range of the Bullwhip, which is fantastic. 57 points of damage with this. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I don't believe... We've got Subdue, but there's no animals on this team, unfortunately. Or at least I very much doubt that uh, Canopus Race count as, as Beastmen. Possibly Divine? Let's have a look. Hu oh, no, actually Human. All right. Learn something new every day. In this world, humans have wings. 117 points of damage. 116. You over there, you worry me. So, I'm going to try and take you out. If I can kill the wizard before it's attacked anyone, I'll be happy with that. 171, yeah, make it so. There we go. Worth it, in my opinion. Only 52, but not bad at all. Now, who are we going to be attacking with you? You actually have enough for a tremendous shot. Might be able to take out one of the clerics as well. That would actually be a pretty nice start. 127, that's unfortunate. 138, just shy. 88, well, that's a bit of a pain. 88 down there, no, we'll go with you then. Um, 127 or... No, you're closer. If we can manage to pull off an extra two damage... Oh, an extra one. Ah, oh, well. It's going to tie up the healer for a little while. Oh, you... Gallywag. Give you a clobber. Well blocked. Can't recruit you. And we can get a kill with the griffin. Here you go. Lunch. Oh, and a tarot card. That looks like death. It is death. That, from what I've seen, generally results in a significant portion of a luck being given to whoever picks it up. Can't use Mother's Blessing yet. I could possibly use... Um, Boon of Swiftness. Let's actually have a look at this. Divine Spell that draws power quicken a single target. 
Let's quick in Canopus. Now, I'm hoping that this means they'll take their turns faster. It could just mean that they'll get to move around faster. Let's actually have a look, though. Yeah, recovery time is hastened. That's actually pretty awesome. Now, those two healers are probably going to worry about the cleric more than anyone else for a while. So it's basically just tied them up. Which is fine. And you've got a move again. Well done. Can we finish you off? Yes, we can. In that case, I think we should. Glorious. Oh, another tarot card. Um, Alright. Let's try and get can uh, Canopus over there. Oh dear. Aha! <laughs> I love the fact my archer was able to dodge you and then hit you. How embarrassing. You should genuinely feel ashamed. Ooh, you're actually very close now to being impossible for me to recruit. I wouldn't mind that, I'll be honest with you. Right, let's get you some luck. Minus 11 luck, oh my lord, that was so bad. I haven't seen that before. <laughs> Didn't realize that could happen. That was so rubbish. Oh my goodness. No! My card! Oh, well that turn went absolutely atrociously for me. <laughs> Not a fan. Not a fan. We do a chunk of damage to you or start pulling you down. Um, let's go for you. Now, usually I'd go for the healer, but I fancy that Canopus is going to get a turn very soon, which will mean that they would be able to take care of that one before the healer gets a chance. I've got a 49% chance of recruiting you. Come on, come on, come on, you know you like it. No! Yes! Yes! I thought a Rafu was Rafused. I genuinely read it as that. Dyslexia does really weird things with your ability to read. Mostly English, though, I find. I'm, I'm fine with Welsh. Uh, let's see. Let's get you healed up. There you go. And finish them off for me. You tarot cards thief. No forgiveness. Yeah, let's get in there and just attack for now. Ooh, do we have enough? No, not quite. Just one less. The griffins can actually throw rocks, though, which is pretty cool. Should have probably gone for that in that instance, actually. Given everything. Right, what are you? Are you a warrior? Okay, that's not too bad, but I'm not fancying you getting involved in a fight just yet. So let's have you hold tight there for now. There we go. It's a decent attack there. And a fairly underwhelming counter-attack. Take out this healer. What are you going to do? Going to go for my griffin and miss. Ha ha! At this point, I can drop in a mother's blessing. Now, this should double the power of my divine spells. So, this will heal for 84 points of damage. There we go. Now, the only thing with that is if the next spell you use is not a divine spell, then the effect is wasted. Because it just cancels the effect. I think it's specifically defensive spells as well, so basically healing. If it isn't healing, then you've just wasted the 50 TP it costs to get it off, because it'll just be deactivated without any actual benefit. Ooh, skiller. Very good. 
Now, we should be able to use Numbing Claw here. There we go, 44 points, 100% and a stun. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. We could have come out of it better in terms of the... Ooh, Boulder Leggings. I accept. But we could have come out of it a little bit better in terms of the tarot cards, but... Oh, uh, well. The same level 10. Fantastic. Griffin is up to level 5. Level 6. Glorious. And 99 points to everyone. Raph wants to join the party. Very well, I accept. Welcome aboard. That wasn't a bad little random encounter, to be honest. Um, in fact, let's quickly just pop in here. You've got 189. I'm, we're waiting on stun breath for you. But where is our beast tamer? I don't believe you've got quite enough. Damn. <laughs> You're seven points off. Oh well. We'll just have to wait on that. Now. This is an interesting one. We could keep you as a warrior if I really wanted to. Let's go ahead and equip you for combat. Oh, apparently you're much better with an axe. Let's check out your skills. Daggers, counterattack, and mighty impact. Can I pick up axes for you? You know what? A, a two-handed axe wielder. I find that kind of nice. As far as warriors go, I think that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, okay. But, let's go on to Fidok Castle. Uh, another one? No. Cutscene. Ooh, this is an important place now. I was about to say, having two random encounters, that's very uncommon. <laughs> Usually you have to walk back and forth uh, like five or six times before to get one, much less hit two, one after the other. So Lancelot is here, sister. Come. Must we greet him so short of breath? Ooh, actually, Lancelot. Uh, I'm not sure this is a good idea, Denim. Lancelot is a very, very good person. If word has gone to him about Balma Musa... It may oh, never mind, it's early enough. But it might have not gone down quite as you planned. So, Leonor, what are you doing here? Where's Lancelot? I wished a private word with you, and Sir Lancelot was good enough to oblige me. Why such secrecy? Yeah, indeed. It is a matter of grave importance. Oh, no. You're not going to ask me to torch another town, are you? The first one was bad enough. The resistance teeters at the edge of the void. We lost a great many in the Battle of Sanji, and each day we lose more to desertion. Why do you think that is? Ooh. Are you making a power play? Oh, that's... this is awkward. I mean, realistically, the obvious answer is the Duke's impatience. Which is quite dismaying, considering that the Duke had this plan, and it seemed like a good plan. It required a terrible sacrifice, both in lives, blood, and also Denim's innocence, honestly. But, uh... Then kind of threw it away. It didn't quite work as the Duke had intended. We didn't have the backing of... There wasn't like infighting in Galgastan as the Duke had anticipated. But we were in a stronger position than we ever had been. That is the Wallister. And then the Duke just kind of pushed forward. Almost heedless. Like as if he couldn't see that, that he needed a wait, especially when things started to not go his own way. He kept, he just barreled forward as if the plans were all working, when in fact, they weren't quite working. Kind of blind, ignorant, or just disbelieving that his plan could have been wrong, but uh, it sounds bad that I'm laying all of these troubles at the Duke's feet, but Denim, I can't say. Well done, Denim. You're far more diplomatic than I. But I don't think Leonard's going to take that. It is our leadership, or lack thereof. 
Mm. We were defeated at Sanji because we rushed into battle too soon. I mean, to be fair, that, that is actually why we were defeated, yes. We moved before the enemy's forces were fully divided and see where it has led us. He looks like he's really thinking about this. Already we hasten towards a greater error. If we place ourselves at the mercy of the Dark Knights, we betrayed everything for which our kinsmen died. And bearing in mind that... I, I men remember mentioning right at the beginning of my starting to play Chapter 2 that it would be very easy from the dialogue that you got to see right at, at that point to think of Leonard as this kind of... Uh, arrogant, not quite bloodthirsty, but unwilling to accept any blame, unwilling to count the cost of the sacrifice at Balmamusa. But in the cutscenes that happened prior to that, on in Chapter 1 on Get Dave's channel, where he was playing through Chapter 1, you saw that Leonard initially was aghast at the, at, the, at the mere idea of it. It took convincing from the Duke to get Leonard to side with it, and Leonard sided only because he genuinely believed that it was for the best of the Wallace. And that's how Denim sided with it. Denim thought it was an atrocious thing to do, but recognised that there was this potential for it to ultimately be the right thing for the Wallace, the needs of the many outweighing the needs of the few. I mean, it's a justification for a terrible thing at the end of the day, and, and you know, the jury's out on whether the justification is is sufficient, but both characters, effectively, were just hoping that the ends would justify the means. So to see Leonard making a power play here is very... Very interesting, but Leonel has had has been locking horns with the Duke for quite some time. Think you not so? Until now, I have been patient, too patient, perhaps. Triumph over Galgastan is more distant than ever. Wallister rots from within. Our resistance needs a new leader. Ah, oh, Leonel, Leonel, you're treading a very difficult path. Leads to darkness, my friend. Yoda would be very concerned. I believe... Oh. I believe you are here. <laughs> okay. It's not quite going where I was expecting it to. You, To be fair, you've completely thrown my theory out the window. Uh, all right, I'm caught on the back foot. I am actually quite surprised. But again... I'll, I'll say this once more, I'm really loving and really digging the fact that Leonar isn't just a one-dimensional character, it has real depth, and the fact that it, I mean, it could be like a, a puppet play, but the fact that he's saying that Denim would be the one to lead. You can't be serious. The Duke has played his part. It falls to us to draw the curtain. This is madness. Do you have any idea what you're saying? Only too well, Courtier. Your brother sees it, too. You would murder the Duke, a man you swore to honour? I'll not believe it. See, this is really playing against Denim at the moment, because Denim did swear fealty to the Duke, and choosing the, the, the lawful path that the, the upholding of order, that is, the law, the, the, the sort of law of the land, keeping things in their correct place, is very, very key to that. But I would put forward that Denim swore loyalty to the Duke as a byproduct of his loyalty to the Wallister as a whole. But still, this... Cartier is pretty much hitting the nail on the head there. This would be flat-out treason, effectively. Sister, Leonard is right. If we continue down this road, the resistance is finished. Those who gave their lives at Balmamusa will have died for nothing. Ooh. See, that's, that's the part there. I feel that asking Le Denim, and Leonard for that matter, to commit the sin at Balmamusa was pushing them to breaking point. They could accept it whilst it seemed that that was the right thing to have done, well, insofar as the whole of the Wallister. But successive losses and the appearance of the Duke is becoming a bit of power-hungry pit bit power mad really ignorant of his advisors just 
barreling on with his own plans despite how ill-advised they are. We must win this war, whatever the cost. The Duke is lost already. Wow, that actually gave me a little bit of goosebumps, actually. I can kind of hear the echo of Frodo's voice in Denim's, uh, what Denim said there, where Frodo was speaking to Sam of Gollum, of Smeagol, and saying that he had to believe that Smeagol could be redeemed because for Frodo, it wasn't just that he wanted Smeagol to get better because Frodo was a nice guy. It was that Frodo had to believe that Smeagol could get better because he saw in Smeagol the same darkness that he could sense in himself. That the ring's influence was, was starting to poison him and he had to believe that it was possible for someone who was thus poisoned to recover. Otherwise he was effectively accepting that he was lost. That he himself had, uh, was going down a path where he couldn't turn back from. And I feel that Denim has that same sort of conviction with this. He has to make sure that Wallister wins the war because that's the only way that he'll be able to live with what he had to do at Balmamusa. The only way that he could justify the sacrifice that happened there is if in the end it does pay for the Wallister's eventual bright future. Night and day, soldiers desert the Duke's army. The people love him not. But you? You have accomplished much. You have the people's trust and the vigour of youth. Yes, the people will see brightness of our future in you. We could ask for none better to lead. This is as absurd. My brother is no leader. Well, Denham, I say you are. Denham taking a long while to ponder his thoughts. Oh, I get to choose. Yes, this is my calling. Ooh. Or I could never replace the Duke. Now... I feel that watching the Duke slowly descend, and it, it has been happening in front of Denim, not just in flashbacks with Leonard and the Duke, but Denim has witnessed how the Duke is not quite the person that he saw fealty to. Not anymore. It seems that power and desperation are changing him. But the wording of this option is almost enough to, to have me pick this one and the reason why I'm so averse to this one is yes this is my calling is, is as if Denim is saying yes I deserve the power I was born to lead and when you start going down the path of saying well other people aren't as good as me they don't know what's best for them only I know they should follow what I tell them to do that's a very dark path to go down also the ninja from the last battle or well the battle before last now more or less said that Benham only saw power, that's all that was in his eyes anymore. That he was basically power hungry and Cartier defended him. But by picking this, would that basically be bringing to pass what the ninja spoke of? It's quite frightening actually. And I mean, I've really got a strong inclination to pick this as a result, but I feel that Benham would agree with Leonard. As terrible as it would be. Yes, this is my calling. If this is what our people need of me, so be it. Ah, oh, thank goodness. I've mentioned it before that sometimes the, the text options that you have to pick kind of are a little bit misleading in the actual thing that your character will say as a result of it. And this has worked in my favour in this case because Denim has, has gone more of the selfless route of it's a terrible thing, but if it's what my people need me to do, again, I will accept the burden of doing what has to be done for them. Which is more how I see Denim. It's not quite entirely selfless, but rather than have... If something is going to happen, something bad, rather he do it than someone else. If he can save someone else from having to bear that burden, then he'll do it. His shoulders are broad enough. This shape has gone too far. Do you truly think the people will follow the man who slays their duke? Always you trust the steel for deliverance, but where has it led us? We are beaten. Accept this, and let's quit this island. No, not yet. Our battle is far from over. Someone must bloody his hands. If there is none other with the courage to do so, let it be me. Well said, Denham. You are a man grown now. 
and the role well suits you. When you act, the people will follow. The failings of the Duke are hardly a secret, but the people will not know this new road where this new road leads. They lack the vision to see. Oh, silly, and that sounds... Uh, I've already talked about that dark path. They will turn to you to shepherd them, to be their courage. Uh, but there will be time for talk later. We must return to Almorica and strike before the Duke realises aught is amiss. Uh, what a sudden twist. I assume those knights were sworn to secrecy? I hope so, at any rate. But in the next episode, it's on to Almorica Castle. For yet another twist in Denham's story. This playthrough is certainly not wanting for drama. Ooh, we got a new title, Man of Resolve. We'll check that out in the next episode. I do hope you've enjoyed this one, though, and will be joining me for the next. But until then, and as always, do take care.